Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed update on Tropical Storm Tammy for Thursday, October the 19th, 2023. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone, and making any decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the latest information for where you are. Looking at the latest visible satellite imagery from tropicaltidbits.com on Tropical Storm Tammy, and we can clearly see that the system is still dealing with shear from the west northwest at about 10 to 20 knots and when i mean by shear we are seeing some of these feathery white spheres see these uh filaments they're actually going this way towards the storm but the system is going this way which usually means that the shear vectors are actually coming in out of the west northwesterly direction so while it looks impressive right now it really in structure wise looks still anemic because we have a lot of the deep convection that is off towards the southeast and the eastern side of the circulation. And it looks like the circulation might be somewhere over here right now, moving off towards the west-northwest or even almost due west at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. The zoomed out view does clearly show why that shear is strong on Tammy this morning and this afternoon. And the reason why that is so we have an upper level low pressure system right now moving over Puerto Rico and much of the Caribbean. And that's actually helping to impart this southwesterly and westerly flow over the system. But since our system is moving basically kind of due this way, we are seeing westerly shear over the system. Not only that, we also have a little patch of dry air that is also getting in the way of the vortex, which is why we are not seeing a whole lot of convection on the western side. A NOAA P-3 Orion aircraft on Tammy was conducted this morning, so they flew through this storm and they sampled what are the winds like and how heavy is the rain. And so we can see that the system is definitely being sheared at the moment. See these vectors we're looking at the right panel. So I'm going to point to that so you all can kind of see that. And so um, these black arrows actually illustrate our winds at 2 kilometers or at 850 millibars. So roughly about 5,000, 6,000 feet. And so that's this wind right in here is what they actually found, okay? And then the grayer um, arrows, it's really hard to make out here. Hopefully they kind of change their color code eventually, but the wind is doing this in the mid-levels. So we can see that the surface vortex is actually still misaligned from our mid-level vortex. We'll put a little M there and a uh, L here. So our vortexes are kind of like this right now they are not our in another way because the camera flips things around so our vortexes are kind of tilted not really aligned and so until they get aligned we're not going to see a whole lot of strengthening occur with tammy also they did find uh flight level winds that were pretty strong over 50 knots so that's kind of the orange areas that we see here on this mission also, the rainfall, too, we could even see where the surface vortex is, which is right here. We even see a little curly cue. See that right in there? That's also a semblance of the mid-level vortex that is well seen. So that's why I like these images a lot. One more image to look at here is uh, surface winds at about a half a kilometer above the surface, so roughly about 500 feet or so. Definitely finding some very strong winds here at over 50 knots, which is why the National Hurricane Center has went ahead and decided to go with 60 mile an hour winds in their advisory because of what they found. But we might even try to see a, uh, another vortex try to form uh, down here to the southeast. What I mean by that is you can kind of follow these vectors and then they rapidly curve around. And so we might see some stretching with the vortex because of the shear that is coming in out of the west northwest and it is possible that we might still see another reformation under that deeper convection where um, the thunderstorms actually are at. So at the moment Tammy is a fairly strong tropical storm with 60 mile an hour winds and minimum central pressure down to 1002 millibars. It is moving to the west at 14 miles an hour so it hasn't gained a whole lot of latitude and this really becomes a now big concern for the windward and leeward islands. Looking at the latest track cone of uncertainty from the National Hurricane Center and when the hurricane or tropical storm could arrive on your doorstep. 
So we can see that the system is a little bit south than what they previously thought. So again, this is still kind of playing around a little bit and trying to relocate. And so there's still some uncertainty yet to come until we get a better established vortex. Remember, this is sheared. And so with that tilted vortex, this could try jumping northward a little bit or jumping further south. So right now at the moment... Um, there are tropical storm watches issued out for Barbados. If you're on St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you are not under a tropical storm watch at the moment. But if you are on, say, Martinique, if you are on Dominica, if you're on Guadeloupe, you are now under a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning. So you need to make sure preparations are rushed to completion. You can be looking at more substantial impacts such as flooding, storm surge, um, as well as landslides, mudslides, and water spouts. So just keep that in mind, and then this will likely turn northward, uh, hopefully sooner. I, I wish it could turn northward right now, but it's not. It's going to probably go and take a path like this, which means it's going to go right over these islands, and it's going to bring a lot of big impacts. And then eventually, by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, it will turn out to see as a, uh, a fairly strong hurricane with winds that could reach over 90 miles an hour. The key messages for Tropical Storm Tammy is as follows. Tropical Storm conditions are now expected to begin in portions of the Lesser Antilles on Friday, where a Tropical Storm warning is now in effect. Tropical Storm and hurricane conditions are possible elsewhere in the Leeward Islands where a hurricane and Tropical Storm watch is currently in effect. Additional watches and warnings will likely be required today. Heavy rains from Tammy will begin to affect the northern Le windward and leeward islands on Friday, spreading into the British and U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico over the weekend. This rainfall may produce flash and urban flooding, along with isolated mudslides and areas of higher terrain. And never forget, we could also see some beach erosion, maybe some coastal flooding and coastal impacts. The earliest reasonable arrival time of tropical storm force winds is as follows. You can see on St. Lucia, Martinique, and Dominica, the tropical storm uh, chances there are right around 60 to 70 percent. And it looks like by about early Friday morning, by even late, late tonight, um, you could even see tropical storm force winds arriving onto your area. And then eventually by Friday night, over uh, Montserrat, if you're on St. Kitts and Nevis, if you're on Antigua and Barbuda, if you are on Anguilla or Anguilla, I think that's how you say it. Anguilla, Anguilla, kind of similar. Um, I know I'm not good at pronouncing names, folks. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I think I got it right, though. At least I got the island right. It's up here uh, for Friday night. Either way you put it, there is a fairly high chance for tropical storm force winds. Now we're going to take a detailed look at our global computer model, which is a Euro, and then we're going to really be focusing in on the hurricane models in this video since we have a better amount of confidence on exactly where this might be hitting. This is for Thursday afternoon, October the 20th, 2000, or October the 19th, 2023, and we can see with what the Euro is doing with Tammy, definitely a sheared cyclone by all means. You can see the deepest convection and the heaviest rainfall just to the southeast of the circulation you can see where our low is 1002 millibars so the euro is seeing this pretty well to be quite honest and again you saw um, the pressure down to 1002 so right on top of one another and that's going to be important of what this might do for Friday morning, October the 20th, the vortex tries to get better aligned. And what I mean by that is the deeper or the heaviest precipitation now tries to go over the circulation a little bit more. Not to mention, here is Guadeloupe right here. Here is Dominica. And down here, here's Martinique and St. Lucia. You got Barbados way down here. And you got St. Vincent and the Grenadines all the way, or this island over here. A lot of islands to name off of. And then you got Antigua and Barbuda uh, right up in there. So all these islands, this system is really close. And by uh, this model does not have it hitting land, but there are other models that I'll show you um, that do indicate that. This could strengthen a little bit more, possibly a low-grade hurricane with winds up to about 75, maybe even 80 miles an hour, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. And that seems to come to pass on the National Hurricane Center with their forecast. And then eventually, this will kind of graze the islands on the Euro through the next 60 hours. But we have those hurricane models, and let's take a look at those right now. We're looking at the H-Wharf on Tammy. 
um, the composite reflectivity forecast. So this is showing us how heavy the rainfall is going to be at this given time for Friday morning. Could there be water spouts? Where? What are the impacts going to be? So again, to get your bearings straight, everybody, on what we're looking at, the location-wise, here is Guadalupe here, the Butterfly Island, right here. Here is Dominica, here is Martinique, and here is St. Lucia. And down here, here is St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, there is St. Lucia. Oh, yeah, there's St. Lucia. Here's St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Sorry, I am looking at the island, at chain of islands here, so I don't forget. Gotta learn these, I know. Uh, here's Barbados. So, yeah, the system is getting really close at this point to these islands. And when we go forward out in time, system really gets close. I mean, not super close, but close enough to where, yeah, you can get these rain bands and you might get a water spout or two spinning off of that. Not only that, though, the system could be pretty deep here, 973 millibars, which if we take a look at our wind, we could certainly see a hurricane. No hurricane force winds do not impact the island, but you could also get indirect impacts such as heavy rainfall and some surf. Then by the 54 hour time frame, this gets closer to Anguilla as well as Antigua and Barbuda as a uh, category one hurricane. And you can see there some of these rain bands coming inward. Now looking at the halves A model, again, looking at the same time frame, but only now this goes right over Guadalupe. Uh, and this would be for Saturday, late morning, early afternoon on October the, actually mid morning ish for October the 21st. And look at that much heavier rainfall over the Butterfly Island with much more heavier rainfall to the south over uh, Martinique, over St. Lucia, as well as St. Um, Vincent and the Grenadines. Going to get some pretty intense rainfall. Then, of course, up here, you're going to get a lot of uh, rainfall, maybe some water spouts. And you can see that system moving right over these islands. Going to help hopefully weaken it a little bit, but then it might re-intensify thereafter. As you can see here, 951, 940 millibars, it really gets its act together once it moves over the open waters. Looking at the halves B model on Tammy, um, again, a different model. This one is a little bit more aggressive, 975 millibars. And when we take a look at our hurricane force winds, yeah, the, uh, on uh, one of the islands there, that is actually La Desirade, La Desirade. Yeah, uh, something like that. And yeah, you got hurricane force winds. You even got the eye wall moving right over that. And then, of course, there is Guadalupe really, really um, be, um, getting close uh, there. And so that's why, again, hurricane watches and warnings or hurricane watches, tropical storm warnings have been issued for that reasoning. And actually might get a little stronger than that. She passing over St. John's in Antigua and uh, Barbuda as maybe a high grade hurricane on this particular model with very intense rainfall and some flooding and then that could really get intense look at this 942 millibars by the end of the run and eventually um, it kind of levels off there at 940 to 950 millibars the spaghetti plot is not looking so yummy today at all and what i mean by that Definitely a bad outcome scenario here. In fact, pretty much all of the models here are within reach of the islands in today's forecast. You can see right here the westerly most outlier brings us over Puerto Rico, while the easterly outlier really brings us close to the island still. So no matter the conditions here, I think there's going to be some pretty significant impacts, especially up here to the north where it might get a little stronger than say if it's down here where it might struggle a little bit more however it's at 60 miles an hour and it is to be announced if the intensification is still continuing in despite of the shear right now it's at 60 not, uh, miles an hour we only need another 15 miles an hour or 14 before it becomes a hurricane so we're not really far from that and so you all living on these islands, you definitely need to be getting out of harm's way. Evacuations should be rushed to completion um, because, again, uh, you could be dealing with a lot of rainfall and a lot of flooding. My intensity forecast has been raised slightly from the previous one, but is right within line 
with the National Hurricane Center. And right now, um, I do predict that this will become a hurricane within the next, I would say probably in the next, you know what, let's do this. Let's kind of bring it down a little bit. Probably within the next 36 hours to 48 hours, I think this will become a hurricane and then continued to intensify possibly now to a high grade category one with winds up to about 90 miles an hour. I am only just slightly stronger than the National Hurricane Center beyond day three, four, and five with winds that I do forecast in about 60 hours at 85 miles an hour. This is my forecast. This is the official though from the National Hurricane Center. So I'm adding about five miles an hour over these numbers where it's boxed in red. So I do forecast 80 mile an hour winds in about 48 hours with winds that could peak at about 90 miles an hour, maybe 95 or even 100 in about four to five days. Again, what you're looking at now is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, but I'm just making some tweaks with my own forecast based on the guidance that I have here on the spaghetti plot, which you see here clearly. So I'm only a little stronger, but I don't know what's going on with these models right up here. I mean, all of these category four, are you kidding me? Beyond on day four and five, the HFBI wants this at a category five. Like, what the heck is going on? Before I sum up the video, I really want your guys' honest feedback and opinions on the tail Doppler radar mission that I did provide in today's video because your feedback is very important to me. It really is because it lets me know on what you guys think. Should I provide this in every video when they conduct a tail Doppler radar mission? Because this is latest data. This is like looking into a storm without looking at microwave imagery, without looking at other products, right? This is literally concrete evidence. So if you did like today's tail Doppler radar mission that I provided in the video, please leave a comment in the section below. The more comments, the more feedback really means a lot, okay? So I expect you all to please let me know on what you all thought about that. Because if you all liked it a lot, I will be providing this in every one of my videos. And you can't find this on any other YouTube channels. Just think of that. You can't find this on any other YouTube weather channel. No, I'm not trying to get my ego in the way of me. I'm just, I'm like, wow, busted on what I'm seeing here. This is really, really cool data. Otherwise, if you did like today's video, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. We are so close to 16,000 subscribers, folks. You guys are awesome, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed update on Tropical Storm Tammy.